<clears throat> hey YouTube, what's up? Scarecrow Kaiser here. Today I'm going to be doing a updated profile on my ancient dragon Tachikaze. It's been a while since I uh, updated this for you guys. Uh, last time you saw it was when I used it to win a uh, Michigan uh, ARG States where I went 7-0 with it. Um, it's been a while, but now that they got a few new cards, uh, I figured I'd do an update on it. Not to mention, it's also kind of like a cool, like, to bring it up, uh, since supposedly, uh, I mean, not supposedly, we know it's true, uh, you can't find it anywhere, it's not as far as I've found so far. There's an ancient dragon who got top four at the regional in Florida over the weekend. I haven't seen his deck list. Uh, I don't think really anyone has. Like you can't really find it anywhere. I wanted to see it. I know that he was playing Spino, which, as you guys might remember, I'm a big fan of Spino. I think it's really good. So my list might be different from his. I don't know. It'd be cool to see it, but uh, I figured I'd give you guys the update on my build currently. Um, so yeah. Still testing a few new things, but so my new starter I'm playing is the uh, new the new starter. <laughs> when he's retired, he lets you look at the top three and call an ancient dragon. Um, pluses and downsides to this card. Advantage is he's not generation break, whereas before um, I played the baby camera, which was a really good card, but. You couldn't use it until you got to late game and we started striding. This guy you can utilize early game, like on turn two when you have like Dino Crowd and stuff. Um, the downside is, whereas the baby camera lets you go tutor whatever you want, this guy has a little bit risk to him. You're going to just look at the top three. You can only get what you have as an option among them. So it might not work out very good, but usually it does, so... We're running him mostly because he helps us in our early game, which is where this deck can shine really well comparatively to other decks. So, um, For my triggers, uh, for Dino Dial, our Unflip, and four of our other um, Ancient Dragon crit, it's really cool that she came out hollow. Um, I like that. And it's also cool that the Donodel got that really cool new alternate art. Uh, <laughs> as an Ancient Dragon fan, it was really cool. Not only did I get new art, but I got to make my other crit shiny. <clears throat> Next, we got four Ancient Dragon draws. Um, most times uh, in decks, I don't feel like just playing four draws is like actually a good idea. But it kind of feels just right in this deck, other than the fact that it's an ancient dragon. Um, the draws kind of do help the deck. Um, there have been times where, in my last profile, I think it was actually I was running six draws. Uh, I'm back to playing four right now. Um, I feel like this is working better currently in the meta and stuff. But And then last, we obviously have our four ancient dragon heals. Uh, for my grade ones, I'll start with my one Gatling uh, Garo. Um, this guy, I played just one of him uh, because he feels because I don't need a lot of him. He's just there to kind of feel like a little niche. Uh, he can be a booster, obviously. He's a grade one, but he can also be a good card to put in the front where he has that downer crow. Dino Crowd like skill where when he attacks retires something he gets plus five so you could attack with something attack with him Retire that card who's already attacked revive it get more attacks make this attack bigger um, He's there to play a dual role, and that's why we're only playing one of them uh, yeah. Then I got three nano tank um, The Soul Blast 2, Unflip 2, Grade 1, that we got from the Revival Collection, came really late for this deck, and I had it for a little bit in the deck, because I was using uh, 
baby camera to tutor it out and then get the unflip. However, with some new developments in the deck, uh, I'm playing just Nano Tank now because Nano Tank, the big important part about him isn't the plus four, it's the counter charge. And the fact that he's only Soul Blast 1 to Counter Charge 1 is why we're playing him. This deck doesn't have a way to generate soul. And your soul is your resource for like a couple of like really important things. Most importantly is doing your counter charging. But on top of it, he also distributes plus 4, which can make a card that revives that just normally like a 9k, make it 13 so it can swing it at 11. Um, so that's why we have him. Uh, next, we have three Iguanagorg. He's our reviving grade one. He's really good. Um, you almost always want to see at least one of him. Um, I'm not playing four because I don't feel that hard strapped to get him. As I said, usually if I can get one, I'll be good because this card just revives. So that's why we're only playing the three. Then we play three Pitch to Stride, our Stride Fodder. Uh, it's not an ancient dragon, but it helps us stride. And last, we're playing four Savage Guardian, our damage on flipping perfect guard. Uh, as I've said before, counter charging this deck is important because this deck counter charges a uh, counter blasts a lot. So, unflipping damage more important than being ancient dragon and other such issues. Uh, for my grade twos. I'm playing one of this new guy, uh, Pike. He's kind of like Ty uh, Tyrannobite, where he revives and retired, but you Soul Blast to revive him, and then he gets plus five. The plus five is nice. The downside to him is that Soul Blast, like I was talking about with Nato Tank. Um, this deck doesn't have a way to generate soul. You're only going to get to Soul Blast like twice a game. You'll have your grade one to Soul Blast and a grade two to Soul Blast, and then like that's it um you could argue to play like the draws or something but i always feel like those are bad arguments uh but he's still a pretty cool card so we're just playing one of them for now and then we play for tyrannobite our counter blast one and retired to revive he's still like really really good <laughs> um then we play four dino crowd uh, ideally, who's, he's who you want to ride turn to. When he attacks, sacrifice something, get plus five. He not only buffs himself, but he creates additional attacks by reviving, retiring cards that revive, and then those cards can attack again. Um, we're playing four of them because, as I said, you want to ride him. And for my last grade two spot, I'm playing three Hypno Hang. Uh, before, I was playing four of it. And, like, this card is really good, but for the sake of, like, a little bit more consistency in the early game plays and stuff, I've cut down to one so I could have four Dino Crowd. So I, I really want to ride Dino Crowd as the Vanguard turn two. But Hypno Hang is still, like, really good. Like, if this guy was generic and he didn't need a Spino, um, he would be, like, amazing. He'd be, like, the best grade two in the clan. Uh, really good card. And then for our grade threes, we're playing three Break Ride and four of the Commando. Uh, Commando being the much better of the ones because his on ride skill, which lets you revive guys, is really good. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you can get the Break Ride off. It's kind of a nice bonus, I guess, if you ride the Break Ride first, and then you can have the Break Ride loop later, but it's not really that important. Um, I would spend time to talk about, like, this is Commando Loop with, like, Hypno Hang and Dino Crowd, but I've gone over that before. Not a lot of people know about this, and usually they're like, wow, that's really cool when you tell them about how the loop works. If you're interested in that, go find my old video. I don't want to go through it right now. I've done it before. Um... Now, getting to our G-Zone. Uh, first, we have um, One Destruction Tyrant, Gradogate, I think that's how you say his name. 
Uh, he's almost always our first stride. He's really good. He swings big. You retire some things I've already attacked and then revive them. So swings big, draws a card, revives cards to the field. Really good. Uh, this guy is actually so strong you can like push for game on like a first stride off him. He's like really good. Uh, next we got one pearly titan. We don't use this card a lot, but in certain matchups it's like really good against things like Link Joker and stuff where you can just bring him out, eat one of their rear guards, soak up the power. Um, he's just good for certain matchups like that. You can use them just snipe their field. Then I play one Arch Raider. I almost never use this thing, but it's there because sometimes you just don't have like the right rear guard set up to utilize Gigant as well as you could have Raider, where you just have like one card you're going to revive, in which case it's probably better just to attack with Raider and then gain that on hit skill. So Raider almost never gets used, but he's there as an option. Next, we got four of our Gaia. Um, he is... He's not, like, an amazing stride. Um, he definitely doesn't hold a candle to uh, Gluttony. However, he does help the deck and give it something it kind of needed help with. And that's giving um, a good option against bad matchups like Link Joker and stuff. Like, Link Joker... It is so hard for Tachikaze to beat Link Joker once they get moving. But this guy gives us a little bit better options. He'll let us, like, even if we don't have, like, front rear guards to attack with, he'll give us a way to, like, wipe out the opponent's field. So even though we're just going to, when we go to attack, it's just going to be the Vanguard, at least, like, we're controlling the board. And against Link Joker, controlling the board is a really effective tactic. So that's why we have him. Then we have the strongest card in Tachikaze. If this card didn't exist, I th honestly, Tachikaze would be a bad clan. But he does exist, so he's a really strong card. He's one of the best finishers in the game. Um, he's just really strong in Gluttony Dogma. When you bring out this card, it is highly likely, likely your opponent's going to die. And if they don't die, they're going to drop a ton of hand to survive the turn. Um, really good card. And then that's it for the G units. We don't play Seabreeze in here because it doesn't really need to be in here at all. And Counter Blast 2 is a lot for this deck. You really don't want to do that. Uh, first, we got two of our 20k shield because it's an easy 20k. Then we got two of this guy, uh, the new G Guardian. I slightly underestimated this card at first. He's not what I was hoping for, but he's still pretty cool. Um, for no cost, like Counter Blast or Soul Wise, he lets you retire a regard for cost with something you can probably just revive. And then he gets extra shield. And then on top of that, you can choose two of your rear guards, and they get the skill of if they get retired this turn which means if they're guarding and then they go to the drop zone after guarding or if they were attacked they can go back to your hand and that's actually pretty cool it lets you guard with him you can for a cost retire something from the back row like a guanagorg then revive it uh then give your two interceptors in the front the ability that they can intercept and then go back to your hand so you they were extra shield and then he had 10 shield it's actually pretty cool underestimate how good it actually is and then last one, screw you, because big shield, generic, we have the room, blah. So that covers uh, this deck profile. Um, I'm still kind of testing the waters with some of these new things. Um, so I might be able to get back with an updated profile in a little while. This might change a little bit, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching.